Hi, you're watching Brioche Knit Tips. I'm Zandi from So I Make Stuff, and in this video, I'm going to show you the two color Brioche Pico Bind Off. Here you can see my swatch showing the bind off that I've already finished. And you can see each of the picots here. But you can also see where I've left them out, right there and there, to create some space and to show you that you can either do it as a solid edge or with flat and pico, flat and pico pattern. So you can make it look like that or you can make it look like that. That's up to you. Once you know how to do it, it's really easy to adjust where each of these picots falls because they're actually not worked during the bind off. Brioche is usually worked in a multi-row sequence where each one of the rows contains both a light color going in one direction and then the dark color following it, and that's one row. And then when you go back, there's the light color going back and then the dark color follows it. Each of these picots is actually just a brioche increase worked when that dark color follows the light color back on that final row in the sequence. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll see when we start in the next section of this video. But basically, each of these stitches is just a brioche increase, okay? So if you haven't worked a brioche increase of any kind before, or particularly the brioche four stitch increase, you should probably go back and recap that. I have a video and it's linked at the end or you can find it in this playlist and it's the brioche four stitch increase. I also assume that you've had experience with a basic bind off that I'll be showing later on. And that's actually not very hard if you've ever bound off, it's probably what you've done. So let's get started. I'm really excited to show you how this works. You can see here that I've started a swatch. It's just plain two color brioche. And I'm at the start of my row on the right side. So you can see here, I just worked across in the dark color on the wrong side. And I'm going to work light color on the right side, dark color on the right side, and then turn my work over, do light color on, on the wrong side, okay? And then I'm going to begin the special instructions to make the Pico. So I'm going to start that and I'll catch up with you later once I've started my wrong side rows. You can see here that I'm partly through this row and I'm working in a typical brioche sequence. There are, you know, two yarns worked across on the right side and two worked back across on the wrong side. So I'm working the first yarn, the light color yarn back across on the wrong side. So it's a purl row. And once I finish this, which I'm about to do, I'm going to begin my instruction for how to do a pico edge. So this is my last stitch, the slip, and I'm done with that light color. And we'll be using that again, even though it's a bind off, don't break it yet. Now the dark color. This is going to be used for the inside of that pico. So as we work across, I'm going to start just with a plain stitch, just to get it going. So I've slipped one, and I've done a slip one yarn over just to begin my row. Then, some lint. Then to start my pico, I'm actually just going to do brioche four stitch increases all the way across the row or wherever I want to pico to be formed. So knit into the stitch, yarn over, knit into the stitch again, yarn over, knit into the stitch one final time, slip it off, slip one yarn over, okay? Now, if you haven't seen the brioche four stitch increase before, I have a video of that and you can go back and watch that where I do it slowly. But I basically just want to show you what happens at the end. So another brioche four stitch increase, slip one yarn over, brioche four stitch increase. 
into every single one of these that you want to make a pico. So I'll show you a little slower. After my slip one yarn over, I'm going to knit into the stitch, pull the stitch through, but don't slip it off the left hand needle. Yarn over, knit into the stitch once more, still not slipping it off the left hand needle. Yarn over again through the, between the tips of the needles and then knit into it one last time, this time slipping it off. So that's how you do it. And I've done that a bunch of times and as I get towards the center of the row, you know, this is a lot of stitches and you don't always want a pico all over. So I'm about halfway through the row and I'm just going to do a slip one yarn over and then I'm going to do a plain brioche knit. No increases because I want to show you what it looks like when they're not every stitch. So then I'm going to do three increases here. Well, let's just do one here. So that's one single brioche four stitch increase. Slip one yarn over and I'm going to do a plain brioche knit here. So you'll see what a single pico looks like right in the center of the row. And then I'll finish the row with some picots in every stitch. So brioche four stitch increase into the next one. Slip one yarn over, another increase. Slip one yarn over, another increase. And then slip one yarn over and you don't want to increase into the last stitch just because it might look funny. I haven't tried it, but I think it'll put a pico right on the edge and it won't look so good. So what we've done all the way across is wherever we want a little arch, we've done an increase. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm ready to work back with the right side facing me in the in a knit row. And I have my needle ready. And this time to create that arch look, I'm going to be using the light color again. And I'm just going to be doing the same bind off that I would use on any other edge. So knit one to begin. And then I'm going to brioche knit. So get both of those on the needle, but this will look familiar after this. Knit into that, pass one over. Into the next stitches, which are part of the increase, knit, pass one over, knit, pass one over, knit, pass one over. And that's just a regular bind off. The traditional way. And now whenever I see the light stitch come up, that's going to be a brioche knit instead of a knit. But other than that, it is familiar. But make sure that you're not splitting this into two stitches or dropping something. Make sure that you pick them both up at the same time and then pass one over. And so I'm going to go a little bit further here. But already we formed one of our picots. And before I do my next brioche knit, I want to show you this because look at that. Already they've started, okay? So that's how we make the picots. They're actually done on the row before. So I'm going to continue going on with my row. Brioche knit, remember every time you see a light stitch, brioche knit. Binding off. Oops. And then I'm back at the brioche knit here. And remember, now this is the spot where I did a plain one. And into this, ah, I dropped it. Into this stitch, I'm just going to knit normally. Now I've gotten to this spot. Remember I did a 
regular, regular brioche knit, no increase. At this stitch, I'm going to knit and bind off normally, okay? And you'll notice that the next brioche knit and bind off comes up pretty quickly, but you'll start to see that there's a flat spot right there. So there's no pico. And I'm going to continue on with my row. Now as I get close to the end of the row and I've gotten used to all of these increases and brioche knits, it's pretty easy to forget that I'm doing anything special in this because remember all of our work that we did to do the picots themselves, all of that happened in the previous row. So as I go across the row, if I'm not paying attention, nothing's really going to happen, you know? I don't have to count anything or make the picots here. That's all done. And then the last stitch, great, I'm just going to pull a loop out here and I'll show you what we've done. So here you can see we have our five increases that we did right in a row. Then remember we left some space and we did a single pico and then we did three of them together. So on an edge, you can really choose. Do you want something that looks like this? It's more sparsely spaced out, pico, dip, pico, dip, pico. Or do you want something that's fully, fully picoed, I guess that's a word. Or maybe you want something that's kind of like a pattern, something that reflects whatever stitch is going on below this. So that's up to you. It's really easy to do by sight, so you can adapt and choose where you're going to put those increases on the previous row. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll come visit me again on this YouTube channel and see some of my other knitting and craft tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.